Okay, hello, you're welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, I'm going to solve this um, integral using the di method. Okay, so actually, we are here to find the antiderivative of this function, not actually the area. So, e to power x times the cosine of x dx, all right? So, we are normally we use um, the integration by part, which is what I'm going to do here, all right? But I'm going to use a different version of it called the di method. So here is a kind of portable way, a table method for this. So what we'll do, like we've done in our previous videos, where we talked about three functions, all right, where we had um, a polynomial function multiplied with something like the exponential function, and we saw how they behaved. So here we are going to use this, we are going to do for this one, right, using the same approach. So we put down the di, that is what we do first, and then we create a table with that. Now, the next thing we do, we put down the signs in front, plus, minus, right? Just alternating like that. Great. And this D here, like we discussed, stands for differentiate, and this one is to integrate. Okay, great. So to differentiate which function and to integrate this which function given that these are product of two functions. So it's now your choice to make. Look at the functions, which one will, will be easier, okay, for you when you differentiate, and which one will make it easier for you when you integrate. So when you choose that, if you choose to differentiate this one, you now integrate this other one, and so on. Okay, but in this kind of example, okay, in this case, whether we differentiate this or we differentiate this one, it does not matter. So any one that you choose to differentiate, you do it and you integrate the other one. But the main issue with this kind of integral is that applying the differential integration by part, we will not have an end, unlike when we have something like, let's say, x squared times e to the power of x, if you are to integrate this, all right? This one, we have to differentiate this and differentiate it again, because at that point, you are going to have a constant. But in this other hand, we will not arrive at any constant. So what do we do? Hmm. Well, we are going to apply this method. And where, where we have to stop, we will know why we stopped. And that will help us anyway. So I will put down e to the power of x. Let's integrate that one. And I put down the cosine of x. Let's, let's differentiate this and let's integrate this one. Any one you like, you can choose to differentiate this and choose to integrate this one. It does not matter in this case anymore, right? Okay, so we differentiate e to the power of x. We still have the e to the power of x. We integrate cosine of x. We have positive sine of x. Now, we go ahead and differentiate e to the power of x. We are going to have the same thing, you know, the exponential function. When you differentiate it, the slope at the point remains the same as itself. And that is the function at that point. So we, we integrate this sine x. Hmm. The integral of sine x is negative cosine of x. Now, maybe if we go further, we are going to have e to the power of x, and this will be um, sine x when you integrate negative cosine x. Sorry, negative sine x. Now, you observe. This was the original question. All right? We applied it once. We differentiated once, we integrated once, and we arrived here. And we did it again. You observe that this is e to the power of x. It is still here. And this is negative cosine x. Irrespective of the negative um, constant multiple, negative 1, we have cosine of x. The functions repeat. The e to the power of x and the cosine repeats. So at this point, you just have to stop here where the function part repeats. And you don't continue further, all right? So you do not do it till any of them reduce because none of them will reduce. You actually end at where the function part will repeat. So it does not matter the constant, whether it is this divided by 10, no. But provided it is e to power x and cosine of x that you have at this point, and that is what you get, okay? Then you just have to stop there and multiply the diagonals and integrate the product of the last rule. That is it. So at this point, we just stop here a little bit, and then we go ahead and multiply the diagonals, and then we take the integral of the product of this last row as usual. 
So here we are going to have this to be equal to, well, we put it down as, okay, let's, let's not use that. Maybe we'll put the result there. We have that the integral of e to the power of x, then cosine of x dx is, we multiply the diagonals, so e to the power of x times sine x, you put it down, times sine of x. Again, we multiply, multiply this with that, so negative e to the power of x times negative cosine x, that will become positive e to the power of x, cosine of x, like that. Now, we are done multiplying the diagonals, we now have to integrate the product of the last row. So, multiplying negative with positive, we're going to have negative, then the integral of e to the power of x, then cosine of x, and you put down the dx like that. So, you observe over here that since the product of the last row contains some constant, which was not here, but the constant has been taken out, the integral here is the same thing as the integral over here. That is to say, what you have been asked to find as also repeated here. So what we need to do now is to um, collect like terms and make the real question the subject of formula. That is to say, add this one to both sides. So if you move this one over to this side, it's going to become this plus that, which is two of that. That is two times the integral of e to the power of x, then the cosine of x dx is e to the power of x, then sine of x, plus e to the power of x, then cosine of X. So what I just did there was to move this one over here, since it's just the same thing as this, so if you move it to become positive, then this plus that will now be two of, two of them, because they are the same, actually. Okay, so we are now here. So actually, to find the integral of this, we just need to divide both sides by two at this point. So by dividing both sides by two, right, we're going to have that. And you know what? Maybe we can split this 1 over 2 inside for everybody. This will be this over 2 and this over 2. And we go ahead and add an arbitrary constant to that. And that right there is the antiderivative of that given function using the di method. We applied it twice and it made sense like that. All right? Okay, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.